Hello everyone, welcome back, it's Top Hacking, and today is a good day, because the devs from a stereotypical lobby made a small spin-off for it, known as Replic County Archives, not too long ago. It's a short experience, but one that can fill us more with the LORE! So without further ado, this is Replic County Archives, the story explained. Replic County Archives opens up on the lobby, and after going through the lobby, it turns out that we play on July 12, 2003, at 7.45 p.m. This will be important for another tidbit of information later. We are five miles out of a mysterious county known as Reple, helper backwards, county. We wake up as someone was knocking on our door, and we find a package from our parents. It seems to have been written in haste, but they tell us that they'll be back at 12 to celebrate our birthday with our sister. As for now, we are all alone in the house. They even give us a smiley face, which means that this is definitely not your mother and is instead an alternate, and you are not safe. To prepare for the party, you decide to clean up the basement, where you are currently living. You are given the objective to clean your bed, where we find four objects. A pillow, a helper plushie from the game Stereotypical Lobby, a pizza box from Romeo's Pizza, and a Chinese noodle box. Once picking those up, we then have to move our trash to the door and organize the pillows on the couch. And as we do, the TV comes to life, warning us to shelter in place due to nearby fugitives in Repla County. They tell us to stay inside while the Repla Sheriff Office tries to remove or neutralize the threat. They also mention that they want to assure us that we are safe and to contact local law enforcement for anything strange. After that, we see cop lights going, but no cop cars. So I guess I should have called law enforcement because of that. After that, we are then tasked to get the police scanner that we just randomly have and to listen in. Before that, we do have to end up opening the gift that our parents have given us, and it's later revealed to be an Axiom headset, which for some reason had was beeping, and it probably definitely means something. It's really tough to hear anything coming from the police scanner other than we hear two distinct voices, one man and one woman. It's kind of hard to know what exactly they're talking about, but whatever it was and shortly as gunshots can be heard outside the house and dead silence from the scanner once those gunshots end. Another emergency alert system then pops up. This can only be heard with your left headphone, so put it on now. I'm sorry I had to announce this. Heard was a result of a hijacking incident. We have confirmed that there is no such thing as Revla County nor the Revla County Sheriff's Office and that there are no fugitives in the area. However, we have reason to believe that this hijacking was done through Axiom Virtual Reality headsets. If you possess one of these headsets, please step outside your house and surrender peacefully. The Central Task Force has been deployed to enforce this recall. Thank you for your cooperation informing us that there is no such thing as Replic County, and that the previous announcement was probably done via the headset. We tried to turn on the lights, only for those lights to be broken at the worst possible time, and for someone to break inside our home. The announcement did mention that the CTF, the Central Task Forces, will be trying to recall and repossess all Axiom headsets, so that's probably what the break-in was about. We grab a flashlight and then hide in the gun room, where we later hear someone say, they're down here. We are then instructed to hide, but while we do, if we approach the door from the gun room, we actually hear some heavy breathing, almost as if someone is breathing from a gas mask, or from a mask in general. Once they're done, we grab the gun and walk out, clearing out the basement. Notably, the headset is now gone from our desk, so I guess they were the CTF. Walking to clear the upstairs, however, we are immediately shot by what seems to be a, a shotgun and killed. The game ends by giving us the badge of prelude. The story here is a little messy, but one thing is for certain. The events depicted aren't before any event in the stereotypical lobby, just given by the fact that the badge is called the prelude, or prelude which is before the story actually happening. It also makes the story a little more difficult to decipher due to its connection to the original game, given that it was considered to be more of a spin-off. So let's start munching off these little theory bits little by little. First things first, and I think the one that everyone noticed, Replic County 
is helper backwards, or Repla is helper backwards, as mentioned previously. And it seemed that the Arn Fugitive that we hear of is experienced. Going to the Ignited Softworks YouTube channel, we see a video called Repla County Archives.mp4, which has footage dating back to 2000 to which we hear of a report by the sheriff's office that a suspect we see exiting the vehicle game-ended the cop and took half of his face. He disappeared from the scene, with the whereabouts of the subject being unknown. We do know that the subject is a man though, so good on us I guess, and is really good at hiding his face given that he still remained unknown three years later. But this also proves that the killer could still be out there in 2003, as this happened in 2000. And guess what happened the next year in 2001? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm not, I'm kidding. Anyway, it's also here where we are given a number, and by actually putting the number, the phone number, to get an Axiom headset into the phone, in the game, we get the following report from the Replay County Sheriff's Office, dating with the incident date of July 12, 20, 2003. The location, Replica County. Here we see associated people with, once again, the suspect being unknown, but we do have two deceased people, a 15 year old and a 35 year old. The slashes next to them could represent their names as the, recording, the reporting party John Blank is a witness, so we assume that that is his last name. We don't know the vehicle operator, we don't know the suspects, but due to the incident narrative, it appears, and based on John's own telling, Quote, on the specified date and time, I responded to reports of a motor vehicle collision along County Highway 957 out of Replica County. Upon arrival, I noticed a gray SUV parked on the side of the road with the help with the driver flagging me down, and a slash 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 sedan crashed into the tree line. Upon contact with the driver of the gray SUV, he stated he had found the sedan wrecked on the side of the road and contacted 911 emergency dispatched. Upon further inspection of the sedan, bullet impacts were noticed on the windshield, with two deceased individuals inside the vehicle. Both are pronounced dead by e EMTs, and a lookup of the sedan's plate failed to yield any results. The driver was absent from the scene, and the witness reported hearing gunfire just before locating the incident scene. Detectives were notified for a homicide in a missing persons case, and the scene was cleared by deputies. This report is shocking, considering that it is on the same day of the events that occur in Replay County archives, as well as it being in Replay County, which we know that within the own within our experience of the game, we are five miles out from it. Once again, the killer seemed to escape, as we can assume that the suspect is the gray SUV, perhaps wanting to cover his tracks, but why then escape? Which leads me to the idea that this is the armed fugitive that we hear of in the game itself. The suspect is unknown and had game-ended two people, once again a 35-year-old and a 15-year-old, with our witness John coming to tell the police their story. I believe that this is the exact same person that did the 2000 incident that we see in the archive video and is likely striking again on our fateful night. Perhaps to end John? It is a theory that he is very likely trying to gay man John as to kind of cover his tracks, considering that John is the only one that saw the incident, as well as John coming upon contact with the driver of the gray SUV, which could be a threat considering that, you know, he could get him in trouble. And hence, our armed fugitive attempted to find him later in the day, which seemingly almost failed. I bring attention once again to the details in the game, the gunshots and the police scanner we have. The silence after the numerous gunshots might actually indicate that the killer may have a successfully evaded or eliminated the police. And the fact that there's a later EAS alert, it could be that he has used the headset once again to hijack the EAS alert system and claim that Replic County isn't real. The motive? to make sure that no one knew what happened, to discredit reports from the office, and to make sure no one goes investigating for him and juxtapose technologies. As for the CTF, the Central Task Force recalling headsets, it's a bit messy, but I don't think that they're working with the government or with any local law enforcement. I think the CTF is actually a division or perhaps a branch 
of juxtaposed technologies, repossessing all headsets for another purpose. One likely more sinister. It makes sense that if it is the killer, who we can assume is the CEO of Juxtaposed Technologies, he has the resources to fund the task force to remove the issue and remove anyone who stands in their way. It also would make sense why we don't see the headset on the desk at the end of the game. They took it and likely didn't intend on you being killed, but because you wanted to clear the rooms, you met an untimely end without your happiest day aka your birthday. It is also also pretty relevant to mention the fact that the beeping of the headset could have actually been perhaps some form of tracker or GPS for them, finding out where that headset is. Why would the police or government have a locator for them if Juxtapose Technologies is the one that designed the headset? So it makes sense that they, of all people, would likely know where all their headsets are located using the beeping. Of course, that is once again just another theory on the beeping, considering that it's actually not the police scanner, it's the headset that beeps within the game. But what is the sinister motive? Well, that is where the badges actually come in. You actually have two badges that you can get within the game. The Prelude and Incident Report. Incident report is ga is given and awarded when you are able to successfully answer the phone call in which we see the report from the Repla County office. However, the prelude actually has a description. The description is in Caesar cipher, and decrypting it, it has Operation Arcadian. It seems that whatever the task was for the CTF was more of a planned operation, not by what seems to be the government, but what seems to be juxtaposed technologies to fulfill some form of goal that they have in mind. And that is why it's kind of important to mention that by mentioning Replica County doesn't exist, they might be trying to cover their tracks, trying to cover their base of operations, and trying to discredit any form of reports or office or office papers that may get out during this time. This is a planned operation that seems to be more from juxtaposed technologies than it is from the government. But what exactly are they planning to do now with all the repossessed headsets? Well, it's very likely that they might be trying to install stereotypical lobby as considering that this is the prelude and as stated before the prelude is an action or event serving as an introduction to something more important it could be that the stereotypical lobby is the end product of the repossessions that they may be trying to implement it into the vr headset years later months later and after an unknown specified amount of time to finally release what seems to be the helper or perhaps to entrap more people in the obby itself. But that is just a theory. Hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys all for the support on my stereotypical obby myth video. I've got a couple projects in the works uh, additional to this one, so just keep an eye on those. And. Also, for all the fan art, uh, a lot of it might be showing right now. I wanted to show a little bit of fan art because it was based on a suggestion that someone made, and I think it's a good suggestion. So if you want to, if you want your fan art to be featured here, go to my Discord server and you know, shoot, uh, go to the art channel and just post your art there. I may make a specific fan art channel if uh, if I really need to, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I've been top at King. Toodles.